Oh, look at this new photo of the celebrity. They look so pretty. Damn, I wish I was that pretty. Why can't my nose look like that? I look like a potato today. Wait a minute, that's their photo from last year. What happened to their nose? Oh my god, where did the eyelids come from? And they had no upper lip before. Where did it come from? Let me check the comments. Someone must have noticed. Yes! Oh, yes, a single person noticed. That's great. That way other people will know about it and hopefully they won't feel so bad about their own appearance. It's called growing she up. She just lost the weight. It's just made. My cousin's friend's nose shape changed drastically when she, she grew up. Baby so it's not it's, it's, it's just her She's just smiling. It's called growing Okay, am I ugly or am I just poor? You're naturally so beautiful, my darling. You are perfect the way you are. Hi, it seems that my best videos are those motivated by rage, so here I am. I am done with people trying to convince me that celebrities are not capable of lying. Like, baby. <laughs> As if they were ever models of morality. And I'm tired of celebrities not being transparent with us and getting away with it because we put them on a pedestal and because we like them. So today we're going to dip our toes in the long and complicated history of famous and powerful people trying to create a perfect image of themselves. Because it's nothing new. So we know that beauty has long been associated with money, but that's not always the case. Most of of the time beauty equals youth. So the idea of naturally beautiful young women, rich or poor, has been long romanticized. Think of basically every single female literally character, be it classical tragedies or poetry or Shakespearean plays. I don't know, romantic poem. And it also directly translates to art, which has been focusing on young, beautiful women for literally like thousands of years, like ever since art was a thing. And a lot of those women were actually portrayed as working class women. And not only that, they often actually were working class women because those were the only women that wanted to pose for the artists because that was something that was considered uh, kind of improper. So money doesn't necessarily automatically mean beauty, but can it help you achieve it? Stay tuned. We'll be back after a short break. Um, if I if I did sponsorships, I would put one here, but I don't really do that. So follow me on Instagram. I don't know. There is definitely certain things that wealthy people had access to that the working class people couldn't even dream of. Whether it's, you know, adjusting your figure or body with the proper undergarments, or whether it's being dressed well, or whether it's cosmetic products, even though their quality was debatable at, at best. <laughs> whether it's better hygiene or better medicine, or basically not straining, sorry, I have cut fur on my chin, not straining your body with physical work and like not allowing your skin to be accessed directly by sunlight all the time. The rich definitely had more time and more means to pay attention to how they look. And it doesn't necessarily mean that anyone who wasn't wealthy just didn't care about their appearance at all. It's just that in most of the cases they couldn't really improve it anyways, so like why bother? <laughs> they wanted to be tidy but not necessarily incredibly beautiful because like that was unachievable anyway. Like if you worked at a Victorian factory, you were probably more worried about getting bread for your 11 children than you were about your front tooth falling out, you know what I mean. And even though the beauty industry at the time was completely rubbish, it just didn't really affect you or concern you in any way if you're poor. Wealthy people, especially women on the other hand, okay so imagine let's say you're living in 17th century Paris and you're a wealthy white woman whose whole life is dependent on whether or not she marries well. But unluckily for you, you were born with some very unconventional looks for the era. You just don't fit the beauty standards. So you were thin and you're your skin was tan and your boobs were small, your lips were too big at the time. Generally speaking, you looked like a regular 2021 model, but it's 1667 and no one cares. And you try to believe that you're naturally beautiful and that your confidence and your charm will eventually get you a man that you need to secure your future. And yet you keep comparing yourself with all the other ladies. So assuming you had means and you had access to the beautifying techniques, you would most likely give in to the peer pressure of it. And, and you would probably attempt at least a couple of these techniques to improve 
improve your chances for a, of a good marriage. You could use skin products, makeup to make your skin look pale as it was fashionable at the time, or you could improve your figure by eating well and wearing well-fitted undergarments and clothes, and you could use some additional custom-made padding, and you'd have access to the best hairstylists out there. And then wearing all of this, you would hire an extraordinary artist, someone that's just like really good because you can afford it and they would paint your portrait and they would round your shoulders so they look softer and they would use a paint that's five shades lighter than your actual skin tone so it matches the beauty ideal at the time better and they would make your eyes appear bigger and they would make your lips appear smaller and then you would send this portrait to your potential fiance. Girl, go get that coin. And later it would hang at an art gallery where the visitors would just stop and say, wow, that's a beautiful lady. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, tell me that's not something that's happening nowadays. <laughs> Celebrities get famous and they are constantly surrounded by people who are beautiful and are talented and are also their direct competition. People who had work done and are even more successful afterwards. So after a while, those celebrities, those newcomers, give in to the peer pressure and enhance their looks, both to feel more adequate and to increase their chances of success, to like improve their careers. And there are only two major differences in this process nowadays that I believe make it so much more toxic. First of all, unlike 17th century ladies who, I don't know, plaque their foreheads to comply with the beauty ideals of the time, those enhancements that celebrities are undergoing nowadays are permanent. And the second difference is that unlike 17th century peasants who were never even allowed to the art gallery to see the beautiful lady portrayed, we, aka the peasants of today, are constantly bombarded with images of perfection. Not only that, but we are also forced to believe that what we see is true, it is natural, and it is completely achievable, and we're just the ugly peasants that are supposed to worship the perfect faces without asking any questions, because that's rude. And it really struck me when I saw some before and after photos on Instagram, you know, a lot of these are like pure speculation, but it really strikes you after you see a lot of these how I don't really see ugly to beautiful transformations. The before pictures always just look like someone I might have met someday. Like, you know, sometimes you meet people and you, you just go like, they're so pretty, wow they're really pretty. The before photos look real because they were real. They look like someone I, I have met. I don't know. They had those little quirks, those asymmetries. They had just those tiny folds that make them real. And the after pictures always look completely unachievable. I have never met people that look that good. <laughs> you know, the symmetry, the right proportions, it's all almost uncanny. And I'm not saying it looks fake, it just looks unreal. And I'm sort of beginning to think that that's the entertainment industry goal right now, to create a beauty ideal that is so unrealistic that there is no other way to achieve it but through plastic surgery. So by basically being rich. And it creates this barrier between the working class people who will never be able to afford those procedures and the perfectly symmetrical and beautiful faces of celebrities that we're supposed to be obsessed with. It's almost like those godlike qualities and features that are completely unattainable for mere mortals. And the problem here is that back in the 17th century, most wealthy ladies were aware of the beautifying techniques. It was common knowledge. Whether they used them themselves or seen their, their friends use them or heard about it, they knew about them. And while anyone else were not necessarily aware of these enhancements, they were also not surrounded by them. Like, common folk had no contact with the wealthy people, unless they were directly working for them. They were not constantly bombarded by those ideals. This is why I personally think that people with huge following and impact and influential people, it's crucial that they admit it to having work done. It just affects people too much. Because we're just like the 17th century peasants suddenly thrown into the art gallery without any context or explanation. Imagine that. Like, imagine you're a peasant your whole life and then you go to an art gallery, you're unaware of the techniques that painters use to portray those ladies as beautiful as possible. And imagine looking at that and thinking, damn, I'm way uglier than I thought. Like, no one has told them that the paintings are not realistic, no one has admitted to enhancing the sitter's eyes or rounding their shoulders and smoothing their skin. So the peasants would leave the art gallery thinking, damn, those rich people sure are beautiful. I'll never look like this. 
And that's exactly what we do. That's what we do. We are surrounded by perfection, but there is no one there to say like, hi, um, don't compare yourself to this. I didn't look like that last summer and you don't have to either. It was my personal decision and I can look like that because I can afford this. Like, why is no one saying this? It's really not that hard. And when there is someone pointing it out, they're instantly silenced by the well-meaning fans who just cannot accept the idea of their favorites lying or like just not not telling the truth. Because it's not always a lie, it's just people not saying it. Considering how often rich influential people are exposed as nasty brats, it's honestly a bit silly to believe that they wouldn't lie to us. Like, why not? And honestly, at this point, I don't know if there is a single female celebrity that doesn't have a raised brow and a giant eyelid out of nowhere and yet I don't hear any of them talking about it. How many of them have talked about it? Why does nobody talk about it? How hard is it to say, hey I just lifted my ivory yesterday. So next time you try to convince yourself that they just lost weight or they just grew up. Ask yourself, how many people do you know personally whose facial structure is changed completely during puberty? I'm not saying it's impossible, like how many people do you know that had that happen to them? How many people do you know that suddenly had an upper lip after losing weight? Where did it come from? How many people do you know that had that happen? Why does it miraculously happen to everyone in Hollywood? How many people do you know that just naturally take your breath away? Like they just had a massive glow up and you're like, damn, they're so pretty. How many people do you know that, that look that way? I bet it's not that many. And just because some of these changes in famous people are unnoticeable, it doesn't mean they're not there. It just means they did it really well. Honestly, I think for our mental well-being, it is safer to assume that most famous people, most celebrities have had work done than it is to assume that most have not. Because when you think about it, it's just like the 17th century lady trying to get a good husband. These people are desperate. They want to be successful. There is peer pressure involved. There there is a huge amount of money involved. There is giant competition. There is a ton of new young newcomers coming for your job and threatening those that have been in the industry for like years. And everyone around you has been doing it. So like when you think about it, there really isn't a reason why they should not have work done, you know? So the only thing that may complicate it is how the public reacts to this, but that is easily solved. You just don't tell them. And you rely on the benefit of a doubt that they grant you because they're fans. I'm honestly not sure what the moral of this story is it's definitely not um don't do plastic surgery or like celebrity is bad maybe it's just don't fall for the illusion of natural perfection or hold famous people accountable i don't know um or maybe it's remember you're a peasant metaphorically so don't compare yourself with that one portrait of a wealthy beautiful lady that you've seen in an art gallery, you know? Either way, I genuinely hope it becomes common knowledge that rich people will always be more beautiful than us because they always have been. It's nothing new. What is new is that us comparing ourselves to celebrities is sort of like the Victorian factory worker beating herself up over looking worse and more tired than an aristocratic woman who could buy the factory worker's whole household using the money she spent on a single hairpiece and a bottle of a hand cream last week. Who are we? You regular people. What do we want? Honestly, transparency would be a good beginning and we can try some decency and honesty next, but that's up to you. Just a disclaimer that like if you are not a celebrity and you have done plastic surgery, I don't expect you to go around t talking about it because it, it's like your personal experience. But if you do have a huge influence on people, especially young people, and they watch you and they think that's what you look naturally, um, do something about it. It's it's making a mess in people's heads. Stay cool. You're beautiful. Um, bye.